Father God, we thank you. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for your divine presence in this place. We thank you for this great man of God. Thank you for the calling. Thank you for his sensitivity to the call. The Lord, you said in your word in the book of Proverbs that it's better to be called to the king's table than to come and be turned away in shame. And so I thank you because I've been called to a table. So Father, you have prepared the meal for all of us, not for them, for us. And our spirits are open because we want to hear you. We don't want to disrespect you, Lord, like the children of Israel. Because we don't want heaven to be shut up. But we want the heavens to be opened. So that we can hear you and be transformed into your image. And so I bless the man of God. I bless the woman of God. I bless one of my spiritual fathers who's here, Bishop Ellis. I bless him for being the intercessor. I bless every pastor, every teacher, every pastor's wife, every co-pastor. Most of all, God, I, I bless your people for without them we have no jobs. Without them we have no ministries. Father, I pray one prayer tonight. This is the sentiment of my heart. I pray for penetration tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You may be seated in his name. Getting a lot of interference. I honor the Lord tonight for his son Jesus and for all that God has done for us and in us. I give honor tonight to one of the most profound men of our time, a leader indeed, a trailblazer and a reformer. Bishop Eddie Long, why don't you put your hands together for the man of God. Amen. 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 I have not had the pleasure of meeting his wife. But a lot of this is not possible and now that I'm married I know the importance of having a private strength outside of what you do. So I would like for us to stand again and honor the woman of God. <laughs> Sister Long, honor the woman of God. Amen. And to all of the elders and have to recognize Bishop Ellis who have been such a tremendous blessing in all of our lives especially here at New Birth Sister Ellis in her absence but Bishop Ellis has been such a powerful instrument that the Lord has used it's so good to see Sister Ripley here Pastor Ripley is just, just a word of wisdom down in my ear, and I just, I love him. So, Sister Ripley, please tell Pastor Ripley I said, hey. Well, get your Bibles, if you would, and go with me. I'm going to begin reading tonight because I am... On a one-night journey, it is very imperative.
imperative that you hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say to the church, not just this church, but the church. We're dealing with something that the Lord has been dealing with me about, and in the midst of this message, I, if I can be allowed to use this word for lack of a better word, I pride myself on not teaching anything or preaching anything that I have not walked out. And so, if I haven't found it to work for me, then I cannot successfully convince you that it is doable. And so what he's bringing to pass in my life in the last two months or so is a living word that I am finding it to transform me. And I don't know why the Lord has chosen to allow me to go through my transformation and my death process in front of the nation. I don't know why the Lord constantly puts me on displays of embarrassment. And then he began to tell me that before any disciple could learn how to die, they had to be taught how to die. So they were drawn close to Christ, not to learn the secrets of miracles, but to learn the proper way to die. Because it's in that death that we bring glory to God. And so when the Lord began to deal with me about this subject, it's going to be a twofold kind of thing, and I'm going to do the best I can to help you to understand what he has allowed me to understand. If you will go with me to the book of St. John, the 10th chapter. The book of St. John, the 10th chapter. And around about the 15th, the 14th verse. And, um, I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible, so it's going to read a little different, but it means the same thing. He says here, I am the good shepherd. If the majority of the people have it, say amen. I am the good shepherd, and I know and recognize my own. And my own know and recognize me. Even truly as the Father knows me, and I also know the Father, I am giving my very own life and laying it down on behalf of the sheep. And I have other sheep besides these that are not of this fold. I must bring and impel those also, and they will listen to my voice and heed my call. And so there will be, they will become one flock under one shepherd. This is where I'm trying to go tonight. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my own life to take it back again. No one takes it away from me. On the contrary, I lay it down voluntarily. I put it from myself. Jesus. I want to stop right there because that's, that's a half of a scripture. On the contrary, I lay it down voluntarily. I put it from myself. And 
the 17th verse says, I lay it down to take it up again. And so I thought that God was just referring to the fact that when the rapture comes, when he goes into the grave on that third day and he is resurrected, that now he lays his life down and he's coming back to get it because he laid it down voluntarily. Then what I begin to see is this, that when we are born, the instant we are born into the world, we are born day one dying. And so the death process continues and it continues until a God saves us. And so what he does is he stops the spirit from dying and the flesh keeps on dying. It keeps aging. It keeps deteriorating. While the spirit man is being caused to have another lifeline. So then saved, saved means that he stopped me from dying. He transformed my body, this body that I have. This is, this is, this is, this is something. And he gave me he laid down his life to take it up again. Mm. So when he went into the grave and came out for the sins of the world, then now we are called, rightfully so, the body of Christ. Mm. Mm. We're the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. So that is the reason why he should. You hear me use these words. He should be able to dictate to his body. And the body ought to be able to obey the voice of God. Because Christ submitted this body. Lord have mercy. The Bible said it's no longer I that live it, but it is the Christ that live it on the inside of me. And if that is so, then why do we have such a hard time obeying God? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He says, I am authorized and have power to lay it down, to resign it. And I am authorized and have power to take it back again. These are the instructions, the orders, which I have received as my charge from my father. I have been given a charge from my father that if you lay it down, take it up again. So in other words, I have been given a charge by my father that before I went through this process, I walked the earth, I healed the sick, I raised the dead. But I would, I would, I would be in one city raising the dead and then somebody else would die and, and, and I would be over here feeding somebody else and somebody else would go hungry. So then he says, well, you know what? My job is difficult. But then God said, I want to give you a greater power. So why don't you come on this side? Why don't you lay down your life? And then when you begin to save us as individuals, you're not saving a person. Every person is a part of the piece of the body. So what he was doing in his death was creating a bigger body so he can be everywhere at any time. When your life is out of order, you are messing up the body. You're not a part of the body. You don't hear what I'm saying. You can't hear God saying, put that down, stop that. If the power of God...
God is not in operation in your life and you're not walking a life of victory, you got to question yourself and ask yourself, am I having a church experience or am I really a part of the body? The body of Christ and we still alive. We're the body of Christ. We still cheat. We're the body of Christ. We still, after eight, nine years of being saved in the bloops, bleeps, and blunders, we still the body of Christ. You don't want to hear this because you know what? The grace message have gone too far because we need to understand that if this Bible works, then what you're telling me is there is no power in the Word. And the reason why we don't see the lifestyle of Christ the way we're supposed to because many of us have never been saved for real because when you are transformed, Jesus said, I cannot disobey the Father. Anything the Father tells me to do, I have to do it. Because I am submitted under the Father. I tore my flesh. The veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. You don't hear me? So the spiritual life of Christ can get out. You don't hear me? That's the reason why God demands that we walk not in the flesh. That we walk in the spirit. Because down on the inside of you is the body of Christ. But you got to tear the flesh. And I can hear the spirit of the Lord saying, let me out. I am trapped in denomination. I'm trapped in customs. I'm trapped in doctrine. But oh, 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 oh I got to work to do. Where is my body? Who is it? Who is it that is holding which one of you in here tonight is holding his body hostage? Because you won't tear your flesh. Oh God, y'all don't want to hear this tonight. Which one of us have gotten miracles bound up in the church? Which one of us is the reason why revival can't break out in our churches the way it's supposed to be? Because we won't tear the flesh. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. Oh yes, we, watch this. We are supposed to be, watch this, we're supposed to be the body of Christ. But then what is the problem? Because then he says this, he, see, he said this to me, he said, it is possible, it is possible, it is possible. I'm just, I'm just going to write what he said. I'm going to read you what I wrote down when he talked to me. He said, it is possible to stand with God in doctrine, while at the same time, we stand with Satan in principle. You don't hear what I'm saying? See, in the book of Isaiah, Satan was a beautiful something. He, he had all kind of stones in his body. He was, he was glorious and wonderful. And he, and he, the Bible said he had wind chimes in him. So when the wind blew, his body made music. He, glor watch this. he glorified, he caused worship to be just, just magnified in the heavens. He was a praiser. Everything about him was adorable. But you know what? He was all of that. Mm. But see, understand something. He didn't get thrown out of heaven because, 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 oh yeah, you know, Satan, Satan thought himself to be equal with God. No, 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 no. That ain't it. He thought that he can usurp the authority. Oh God, we're going somewhere tonight. He thought that he can usurp the authority. It was the authority that God got mad about. It was the, it was, it was the audacity for anything that I have created to defy anything that I said. Oh, come on. See, we in church praising God, but God is ticked off at us. And, and, and I don't care how much we praise because, because he said Satan was a worshiper. He was wonderful, but he could not obey God. That's what the Bible said, that obedience is better than sacrifice. Sacrifice. He don't want to hear your praise if you cannot obey him. Oh, Jesus. See, because, because God created Satan, because he created him, to glorify because he created him the way that he did then that which he created was still able to do that which he created it to do 
but that that he created found a way not to obey him I don't think you just heard what I said and so and so we can be in church saints jumping and shouting and speaking in tongues you don't hear what I'm saying and glorifying God but let me help you to see something that God showed me that if you stand in the house of God and you say oh God I praise you but you are in direct rebellion in your spirit to the obedience of God you are not glorifying God you are magnifying Satan and that's why witchcraft is in the body of Christ oh yeah 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 oh honey our warfare our warfare is no longer alcohol it ain't whiskey it ain't wine it ain't sex it's disobedience because when you obey God so the deception of the devil he's shrewd look how they go whiskey ain't no deception somebody show you alcohol you won't drink it because you know better than that somebody show you crack you won't take it Somebody show you stuff, you won't bother that. But where the deception comes in is that you sit in the house of God, filled with rebellion. And the devil said, I got him, because I got him jumping and shouting. I even got him feeling goosebumps. You don't hear what I'm saying? I got him crying and falling out. But you know what, let me tell you something. The devil ain't afraid of our preaching. He's not afraid of that one message that we preach. He's not afraid of our worship. He's not afraid of our singing. He's not afraid of our dancing. Who the devil is afraid of is a believer that submits them Themselves to God and come under total obedience to the Father. So we need to be purified from the principle, from the from the principle of Satan. We don't even have a right to say highly nothing. When we walking in rebellion, God said, preach, you still on the choir. God said, get off the choir and become an intercessor. You still singing. Oh, you don't hear me. God said, oh, I know you're an usher, but I want you on the front row every Sunday because I want to wash something out of you. God said, denounce your title and submit yourself under somebody else so I can pick you. Oh, you can't do that because you know what? We all have the image. The church is about an image. The church is about what I look like, what people say about me. You don't hear what I'm saying. But God said, Christ denied himself. Though he could have been equal to God he chose to submit himself as a son and the Bible said that he learned obedience by the things that he suffered I gotta do this I gotta do this I gotta do this well you don't know how hard it is you don't know how it is to obey God you don't know what I'm going through you don't know what I'm dealing with and I'm the same words I said to God. God, you don't know. You just don't. You just don't know. And he said this to me. He said, when Jesus went to the cross and he walked the earth, he went to the cross, Bishop Ellis, and he came back. He got up in the upper room and he walked up in the upper room and they said, Is you really the Christ? And Donald Thomas said, I don't believe you're the Christ. He said, All right. He said, He said, Okay, I've been transformed, but okay, look at the look at the nail prints in my hand. Look at the scars in my feet. Here, take your hand. Put your hand in my side. Feel that I'm, I'm really the Christ. God wore me out about a week about that. I said, well, well then, really, I really want to know this. If you was, if you really the Christ and you, they crucified you, then you should have came back, you know, glorified. And you know, what's with that? What's 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 with the scars? And so he said to me, he said, you always complain about get me out of this. Help me, God. Fix this, God. Work it out, God. He said, do you not know you are not authentically the body of Christ till you got some scars? You, you, you know, you know you ain't, no you ain't, no you ain't. Ah, there, there is no way to prove that you are really saved and that you are really the body of Christ until you go through hell and back and can prove that I've been to death, but yet I live. Come on, somebody. The Bible said, though he was dead, yet shall he live. In other words, if you ain't got nothing in your life that you ain't never walked through, that the devil thought that you would never make it and you came out to be able to tell the story, then you are not. You are an imposter. You are counterfeit. Because this generation have not been taught the power of suffering. We want everything on the silver bladder. Give me this. God, I pray for a house. God, give me a car. God, give me some gym shoes. God, Bookie wants some Nikes. Oh, God, do it. And God said, where is my body? Oh, my God, I got a bunch of hirelings in the kingdom doing things in my name. 
name. And he said, we're the ones that are strengthening the hand of the evildoer. You are the evildoer when you're not submitted to God. It's not the drug addict. Every, every time, every time we let you, Jesus, every time we let you get up here and do something, and we know your life ain't purified before God, we strengthen in the hand, you don't hear me, of the evildoer, you don't hear me, but God got a remnant in this house. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. There's a group of people. Somebody said, but I'm still struggling. You struggling because you ain't gave up the ghost. Some of y'all said, I can't take it no more. When Jesus couldn't take it no more, he gave it up. He gave up the ghost when he could not. When he could not take it no more. He said, nevertheless, God, not my will, but thine. Oh, no, no, no. Saints, we playing, we playing, we playing. We don't want no revival. You know why? Because, because when you want a revival, then it's death time for yourself. You ain't got nobody. Listen, you don't need nobody to tell you. You already know where you walk in disobedience. Come on, somebody. You use that as an excuse. Talk about, oh, I, I can't, oh, I, no, 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 no. I hear the Holy Ghost said enough is enough. He that is on the Lord's side, raise your hand. Because I'm here to tell you that, honey, God is coming in the midst of the body of Christ. He's given to separate the wheat from the tear. He's given to get rid of all of the counterfeits. Where yourself and what have you gone through for the sake of the gospel what have you put down I'm not hearing nobody say nothing I'm not hearing nobody say nothing wait 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 okay okay mm-hmm. yes Lord oh God oh Father well, I've, I've been changed. I've been changed. Find change in the Bible. The word is transformed. You don't hear me? All right. Because that's what we've been doing in the body of Christ, going for change. Because change is a process. Transformation is a miracle. You, you, you don't hear me? You, you, no, no, no. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear nobody. Wait, 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 wait. When Jesus went on the mount of transfiguration, it did not take him 10 years to get transformed. When he came under the submission of the power of God, he was immediately transformed. Okay. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't hear that one. Okay. Okay, maybe you don't hear that one. I, I, I want to be changed. I want to be changed. I want to be changed. No, 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 no. And see, and see, Bishop Long, what God allowed me to know, he said, he said, let me go, let me give you a secret as a prophet. Let me tell you why people's lives, why they treat their pastors like they in college and their offerings become tuitions. Why, why do we think? Why, why is it? Lord, I, 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 I read a scripture. Okay, let me find my scripture. Let me just, just, just let me, let me. all right, okay. All right, uh-huh. Okay, God, I hear you. I hear you right here. I hear you, Lord. I hear you. I hear you. Stay on that thought. Stay, stay on that thought. Why is it that we are not there yet? Okay. Because, mm-hmm, yeah, got that. He said in, uh, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Okay, Romans, okay. See, I ain't entertaining you, so I, I'm, you know, it's, it's all right with me. I ain't, you know, I ain't, I ain't one of these preachers that, oh, I'm embarrassed. I lost my leg. No, no, uh-uh, show sure ain't, because I'm fine with this, show sure ain't. Because you know what? This is school. Mm-hmm. Real school. 
he said here in the fifth Romans the eighth chapter in the fifth verse for those who are according to the flesh are controlled by its unholy desires set their minds and pursue those things which gratify the flesh controlled okay say it again can't help it can't help it you just told on yourself got the can't help it and can't put it down you just told on yourself you're controlled by the flesh because the spirit don't have a hope to you yet what has a hope to you watch this is the atmosphere of somebody else's anointing See, don't get tricked because you come to church and everybody praising God. And you're, oh, I got some oil. It just really. The, the, no, 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 that didn't happen to you. That didn't happen in you. That happened on you. And it happened on you because it belonged to your neighbor. That's why when you get in your living room, you can't put it down. That's why you can only stop doing it when you're in church because you're under somebody else's anointing. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing to me right there. You already told me there wasn't going to be no whole lot of amen, so I just, I'm just going to go on and do things, get to the point. So then he said here, he said that you're controlled, and watch this, watch this, you are controlled and you pursue and gratify the flesh, but those who are according to the spirit and are controlled by the desires of the spirit, they set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Now the mind of the flesh which is, what do I, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit is death. Death that compromises all the miseries. It comprises of all the miseries arising from sin. Aren't you sick of people? Pray for me. I just, I'm going through it. And I really, I, you just don't know what I'm going through. And it just, it just hurt me. And she offended me. And I can't get over that. And I don't want to come back to church no more. And they just bothered me. And it's something about, you don't know, people that are controlled by the flesh always got problems. They always got issues. They're not never satisfied with them. They don't know. I don't care what you do. Something wrong with the church. To them, they always got to complain about what's wrong with the church. Then you don't belong here. Because first of all, you are in your flesh. Because if you were in the spirit, whatever. God showed you, you ought to be able to birth it out. You ought to be able to pray, to, to pray it through. Oh, you don't hear nothing. It ought to change because you're here. The anointing ought to be greater because you're a member. I'm not going to get in a whole lot of amens tonight. Because half of the folk crying for, oh Jesus. Half of the folk crying for revival. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Got stuff. You don't hear me. I'm not, I'm not. Okay, let me, just, let me just read this. That is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God. For it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Wait, 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 what do you mean? I submit to God's law. I submit to God. I submit. What is she talking about? I, oh, no, 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 See, God began to show me something. I, I, I got two minutes. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. What I got to do? He began to show me. He said, "He said, what's wrong with y'all?" That's what he said to me. Y'all, me, me too. Wonderful works, wonderful works, fabulous job in my name. He said, "But what's wrong with the body of Christ?" You have not met authority. Okay. Okay. See, see, Satan denied he wanted to be a part of authority. He said, the church ain't met authority. I said, God, what are you talking about? The church ain't met authority. We ain't met authority. He said, no, they ain't met authority. You ain't met authority. The body of Christ have not met authority. He said, let me show you an example of somebody who has met authority. He said, when Saul was killing up the believers the worst creature walk on the earth during the time of, 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 of the Old Testament and New Testament just, just a killer, just a murderer somebody that had no regards for God an atheist didn't believe in God he was on his way to do his thing are we going to 
realize this. You on your way to church. He was on his way. Like some of us come to church and at the church we on our way to do our thing. Yeah, the message was good. I got a little touch. I feel a little better. I don't feel like I did when I came in here. Well, God understand it. And I'm just, no, 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 no. Because that ain't the anointing that I feel that God is trying to birth in this place. No, 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 no. See, that day, well, when I, when I, you just prayed me. I'm just, you know, I ain't, I ain't what I, I used to be. But no, no, no. That got to go. Because ain't nobody stepping about what you used to be. Because if you're not what God has called you to be, you're still in a bad shape. I'm not hearing nobody say amen to me right there. I ain't playing no games. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't come here to mess around. I don't need no brownie points. I ain't trying to get nowhere. Don't care if you don't say amen. But when I walk out of here, the blood is required on my hands. I gotta give you the truth that you don't want to hear it. He said, you haven't met authority. He said, when Saul was on his way to do his thing, the power of authority knocked him off of that donkey. When he knocked him off the donkey, he blinded him. You don't hear what I'm saying? This was a powerful thing. He said, Saul got up off the ground. He was blind, didn't know where he was going. He sent him down to Ananias' house on nobody. He wasn't a bishop. He wasn't a high priest. You don't hear me. He was a man that was submitted under authority. And when Saul saw Ananias, he didn't see a man. He saw God. He submitted himself to somebody that was beneath him. You don't hear what I'm saying. That's why I know we haven't met authority. Because when you meet the authority of God, there ought to be something that happens in you under the anointing that when you get up you're no longer the same oh y'all ain't hear me Saul was not Bishop Long he was not transformed through process oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill that devil in the body of Christ you don't hear what I'm saying he was not transformed through process he didn't get up and today he got a little better and he, he killed two more people but he said well you know I used to kill a hundred a day and now I'll just kill three today. And I'm going to go on another weekend. I only killed one this week. And I'm going to go I only took one of their arms off this time. No, no, no. When you meet the real authority of God, there's enough power in the anointing to stop you in your tracks and change your life forever. Oh, God, I wish I could come. Oh, we play it. We playing us. We done met church. We done met the atmosphere. Now I know what it means. Now when it says we have the form of godliness. We got Now I know what it means when it said, but we deny the power thereof because by now your testimony your testimony day one when you leave the altar ought to be the things that I used to do I don't do them anymore I'm not getting a whole lot of amen look at everybody sitting down you can hide you can stay sitting down because I still see you the Holy Ghost see you oh honey God ain't stuck in your tears where you transformed God ain't stuck in your tongues where is your lifestyle where is the power of God in your life where are the miracles where are the anointing sit down just for a minute sit down just for a minute You don't hear what I'm saying. I'm hearing a scripture bubble up in my spirit. And the Bible said that Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread on the heads of serpents and scorpions. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. What do you mean will you pray for me? What do you mean I'm going through something? No, 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 no. You ain't met authority. Because when you meet authority, the book of 2 Corinthians says, After your own obedience has been fulfilled, then everything you speak got to move. Every demon in your way got to be. Oh, no. Oh, no. See, 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 the devil don't recognize us. He, he don't recognize us. He, he, he just like, just like the sons of Skeezer. Skiba said, oh, wait, wait, we're going to cast out the devil. Oh, you are? Oh, you are? Because see, what we don't understand is when you, when, you, when you come at the enemy and you're not under authority, then you pick a fight you can't win. So a lot of this demonic stuff that's going on in your life, 
is because you're fighting something and you on the devil's territory. You don't hear what I'm saying? You and the devil ain't doing nothing but performing. And so what God said to me, he said, you got to tell the people, you got to make sure that demons ain't performing for demons. That demons ain't singing and demons in the audience falling out. Why everybody's saying, wow, this is a powerful time. Wow, we really having church. You don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all got to help me tonight. I don't mean no harm, but we got to make sure across the nation that demons ain't in our choir singing and demons ain't on the usher board and demons ain't preaching and demons are responsible to the demons so what we got going on is a show but no power because instead of casting the devil out we got people in the counseling you can't counsel a demon if you submit to God God will stabilize your mind if you submit to God God will work out your marriage if you submit to God he'll change your children he'll renew your mind he'll restore your spirit you don't need counseling you don't need to meet authority So the job, the job of the deceptive demon is to wear out the preachers, to wear out the pastors, to have them weary, you don't hear me, even those that they're trying to birth out to help them run the ministry. You got them wore out. You don't hear what I'm saying. I can't get nobody to talk back to me. I'm going to tell you something, my power and authority, Jesus had so much authority. So watch this. So he said that I... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this to my disciples. I'm going to, Bishop Wong is going to give that authority to his preachers. And when they came, oh God, I don't both shot you, to bother the man of God, because the women had, he said, I don't know, must I leave the word of God to serve tables? Don't bring me down that low. Because when I stand up in the pulpit, I ought to be the voice of God that you hear. You got a devil, one of my preachers can cast it out. You got a demon, one of my evangelists ought to be able to get it out. Ain't I got no better two and three and four? Oh, y'all, 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 I'm not hearing nobody say that. Because we're not walking with the power that God said we ought to walk with. Honey, when Jesus walked the earth, he didn't go looking for demons. He was walking down the street one day, and Legion said, oh, God, why are you coming to mess with us? Why are you coming to bother us? What do you do? You ought to be able to walk in the beauty shop and everything go quiet. They turn off the world in music. You ought to be able to walk on your job and they stop cussing because you're there. You ought to be able to walk in your house and your unsaved husband stop whispering because he can sense the authority. Oh, you don't hear me? When you meet authority, you become authority and everything submits under you without you opening your mouth. People kill me. I, I, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know God. Man, the God get him so how many people know the Lord? I know the Lord. I know the Lord. John the Baptist met authority when he was in his mother's womb. Mary walked up on Elizabeth. And that authority as a baby. So don't give me that mess about I'm just a baby saint. Uh -huh. He was baptizing as a baby. Come on here. Come on here. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't hear about I, I'm, I'm just a baby. What? 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 Because the Bible said that, that you ought to be teachers. And yet somebody still got to give you milk. You don't hear me. You don't hear what I'm saying. Well, where is the meat people? Because everybody like they choking in here tonight. Where is my meat, people? I'm not talking about my bottle sucking. Can you help me? Can you help me? No, by now, somebody in the body of Christ ought to have some anointing. You don't hear what I'm saying. It ought to be more than Benny Hinn doing it. It ought to be more than wanting to buy them all over this country. What's the matter with you? I'll tell you why. The difference between me and you, you stuck in your flesh. You stuck in your desires. You stuck in the arcade habits. You need to meet authority.
John the Baptist and he went out. Him and Paul was some. They bought him in oil and threw him out on the Isle of Patmos. He went out there. You don't read one scripture where he said, help me. I'm all burned. Is there anybody here? He was in so much pain until he made the decision to either nurse the pain or go to Revelation. And he said, I know that something is going on in my body that I don't understand, but I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw. No, 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 no. He didn't wait till all his bills was paid. He didn't wait till bookie and everybody got saved. He didn't wait till every trouble he had was gone. In the midst of trouble, it's where you make the decision to be transformed in the presence of authority. That's why God can't get us there. That's why nobody can go to authority. Because the gateway and the transportation to authority is suffering. It's laying down your will. You ain't going to shout. You ain't going to talk about. I had a good time. God said, I can't birth nothing in you. Because you want to shout your way in. And I said, You going in through travail. You going in through groanings. Who da ba shanda da makasaya? Every time I think about something, just keep rolling over my spirit. I can't hardly take it. Let me tell you something. You ain't in this building by chance. Y'all tripping. I got to tell you, tripping, because you don't even know what's going on here. Do you not know that it is not by chance that the name of this building is New Birth? No, that, that, that ain't got nothing to do with the choir. It ain't got nothing to do with who do praise and worship. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing. It got something to do with God giving a man an assignment and calling it a new birth, which means everybody that come through that door is going to be so jacked up. Don't come in here pretending. Don't come and act like you're helping the ministry. You're not helping the ministry. You came to be birthed out. You came for a new revelation. You came for God to clean you out. You came to get saved for real. I ain't hear nobody say nothing. I ain't hear nobody say nothing. I ain't hear nothing. Of all you black folk in here that act like you didn't always had it like that. That's why you ain't got no peace. That's why you still troubled. That's why you can't stop coming. Because God wanna burst some out in you. But he waiting for you to break out of your flesh. Ain't nobody thinking about your hairstyle. Y'all better stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. We don't care no more. But I feel a pulse in this place. I feel somebody crying out, saying, don't leave me like this. I know I'm singing in the choir, but I got something going on in my life I can't talk about. I gotta have a new reversion. I gotta be born again. For real, I gotta meet authority. I, I gotta, I gotta. Lord, they look at me and come crazy. Father, 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 what's wrong? Okay, he's I'm okay. You my body? You got me bound. I tore my flesh so I can be expanded. Now you got me bound. You got me bound because you went to the beauty shop Saturday. You don't hear me. You got me bound because you ain't ready to stop shacking. You got me bound. You don't hear what I'm saying. I, I just wish I had somebody. I just wish I had somebody. Because revival is a, the revival has already broken out in the atmosphere. <laughs> You don't understand. He said, he said, with the authority, when you, watch this, when you, when you, when, when you meet authority, he said, I'm in my father. My father is in me. He knows me. I don't know you. You doing things in my name. Watch this, but I don't, I don't know you. Okay, I want you to get the revelation. He, you, you doing things in my name, but I don't know you because if you really knew me then you would not be doing things you would be doing all things 
You don't hear me. <laughs> when I went into the grave, I got the power for all things. And, and, and so why can't you make cancer move? Why, why, why do you have to submit your grandma's name to the prayer line? You don't hear me. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because y'all looking like, why, 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 why do you have to stand proxy on the altar for ain't you Luella who in the hospital? Why Pastor Long put oil on your head and give you a prayer cloth to take the Aunt Luella? Why? You've been saved eight years. You've been saved nine years. Why can you walk to the hospital and say, woman, get up out of that bed now, not tomorrow? You don't hear what I'm saying? When God gave me this word, he began to transform my life. He got me out of yesterday. He got me out of tomorrow and put me in the now. So when I speak to a demon, I'm not waiting for it to come out. You got until 12 o'clock midnight to come out. I'm not waiting for a miracle anymore. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I'm not praying for a breakthrough and waiting for it to happen next week when I have authority. He's giving me authority over the earth realm and everything that operates in it. Okay, can one of y'all bring me that chair? Somebody bring me that chair. Just one, one, one of the deacons bring me that chair, please. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Turn that chair around this way. Turn it around to the side. He showed me. He said, Tanya, come and sit in this chair, please. He said, He said, This is the Father. This is the Father. Father sends the Son wrapped up in himself. Watch this now. So what the, what the Son, Bishop Ellis, does, <laughs> he does all of what the Father can do. All of it. The Father does not send the Son. You say, you can heal headaches, you can do cancer. But the big stuff, leave it to me. He says, Son, come. Die on the cross. Now, in your death, in the tearing of your flesh, once again, you're able to sit in me. You're in me, and I'm in you. Now, son, save somebody. He saves me. Then he says to me, now, Juanita, if you abide in me, I'm in the Father. You can ask whatsoever you will, and it's got to be done. Ain't no help. So, so, mother, come here. Come here right quick, right quick. So when you, when you said it, thank you, Jesus. So that was the, the father leans over, speaks to the son. Tell him, give him your power. Give him all your authority that I gave you. Because they purified like you did. Because they told the flesh like you did. I want you to touch him. And I want you to keep him in you. Put your arms on mother. Don't let her go. And here go the enemy trying, trying to pull you out. And I want you to keep him because I said that your spirit would be a keeper. And that he would be a keeper. And that, that even in the midst of temptation, he's already made a way for you to escape. You don't hear me. Don't give me that I can't be kept. He's a keeper. And then it, because you know he's under instruction by the Father. Don't let him go. Whatever you do, don't let him go. Because if they abide in you and you abide in them, they can ask whatsoever they will. So understand that the reason why the devil got you in and out of God, it ain't even about you. It's about who he know you got to break free. It's about who you know, oh God. It's about the people that's locked up in your loins. It's about the miracles that you got to transform. It's about the people that's got to be delivered off crack. It's about your family. It's about your mother. It's about your father. That's why the devil is after you. That's why he said. That's why he said. That's why he tried. 
They tried to lure you with stuff. I said, come on. Don't you just want to sleep with Junior one more time? Wasn't the sex good? Come on. Come on, do it. Come on. Come on. But you know what? Come here, baby. Come here right there. Come here. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Sit down there. Sit down there. Come here, baby. Sit down here. Sit down. Sit down there. Mother, can you come and sit right there? He said, come on, don't you? Come on, one more time. Come on, come on. Just don't you want it? Don't you want to sleep with her one more time? Don't you want? Don't you want just one more cigarette? And then but see there. Here you go. You gotta look over here and say, but my sister still on crack. But my mother still ain't saved. But my grandma need deliverance. Lord, what? And you got a decision, you don't hear me. You got a decision to make. But the dictionary told me that the word, that the word authority means the power and the right to give orders, to make decisions and enforce obedience. You didn't hear what I said. The word authority means the power to make and give the right orders, the power to make decisions and enforce obedience. You don't hear what I'm saying. So when I have a authority from the father and the father gives authority to the son and the son gives authority to me that I've been given power to make the right decision I will not smoke it I will not drink it I won't sleep with her again I won't sleep with her and I'm a her I won't sleep with him and I'm a him you don't hear me you don't hear me you don't hear me you don't hear me because now he said behold I've given you power and authority to make my own decision. You know, you, now you know I didn't come in here for everybody. I came here to get my remnant. Because you know some of y'all gonna stay in church. But there's some people in here tonight that's going to be delivered from church and they coming in the spirit realm. You, you, you don't hear me, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. Because see, when you walk in the spirit, then you don't even have to be in the building. And you can dance in your kitchen. I don't have more church in my living room than I can ever have in any building. You don't hear me, you don't hear me. That's why we got to sing you out of stuff every Sunday. Praise and worship team got to sing you free. Sing till you get happy. You don't hear what I'm saying. Pastor got to preach you free. Got to make you feel better about yourself. Got to tell you you going to make it. And that's all we want to hear is you going to make it messages. All we want to hear is be encouraged. But I didn't come with one of those. I came with a come out of it. Now, you got the power to quit if you want to quit. You got the anointing to be delivered if you want to be delivered. I'm not hearing nobody say that. If you want to be set free, the power of deliverance is in you because behold. I'm giving you power. I'm waiting on God. I have practice, but I want you to pray that God set me free. I want you to pray. I, I, I want you to pray that God deliver me. Well, then I want to pray that you meet authority. Because see, when you really meet it, Saul was a killer. You don't hear me? He couldn't pick up another weapon when he met authority. He had nobody, he had no church to go to. You don't, you don't see nobody where he said, and my pastor told me don't, don't pick up nothing else to kill nobody else. You don't hear the pastor because you haven't met the pastor. I didn't hear nobody say nothing. You don't hear the man of God because you have not met the man of God. Jesus. Your spirit don't, don't say yes because you haven't met yes. Yes haven't been birthed in you. It's a birthing. It ain't out of your lips. You didn't hear what I said? It don't come out of here. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it's something that breaks you free in here to the point that when you leave the church, the very thought of it nauseates you. Y'all looking at me like y'all know what I'm talking about. 
I said, you look at me, it, it, it ought to make you sick at the very thought of it. You ain't got to make up in your mind. It's an experience that happens to you when the power of God hit the sanctuary. When all mountains begin to say, God, I'm saying yes to your will, okay? I understand that I got to give up to you. I understand that I haven't met you because I'm going to tell you something. That's why I know now that the majority ain't going in. That's why I know now that when the rapture come, none of understand why a lot of people are going to be left because this is what he showed me. He showed me a silhouette of himself standing in midair. His body was carved out like a silhouette, Bishop Ellis, and it was a frame of light. And when the trumpet sounded at the last day, bodies from the earth realm start going and they start getting in sockets and when he had collected everybody it made up his body that's why he said we me me and the church we coming back we coming back to judge because you are my body and that's why I know a lot of folk that's crying holy ain't going a lot of folk that's lifting up your hands ain't going and so what I came to do tonight as a prophet is to tell you that it's time for you to perfectly understand that if you've been saved for years and you still fumbling over the same stuff it is not God's fault you haven't met authority you've met a church experience you in a high but you have not met God and it's time to meet God the real God I don't cry like that, I don't shout like that, I don't dance like that, but that ain't me, I just don't do that kind of stuff, I, I mean, I have my own little way of praising God, I have my own little way of reaching out to God, that's just me, and, and that's just, you know, that's just the, my personality, well, you ain't came out of Egypt yet, because the Bible said that when the children of Israel got on the other side, when they got on the other side, there's a whole lot of people, and he said, when you march around that wall, I said shout, don't tell me how to shout like that, that's not my spirit, I, I praise him in my own little way. He didn't ask you about your own little way. What he was trying to show you is that some things only can come down with a shout out of your spirit. You don't hear what I'm saying. Then he could have said, y'all whisper, and the wall will come down. You don't hear what I'm saying. Why do you think he put it in the Bible when he said, and the Lord, no, no, blah, 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 not sanctify, not heal, but the Lord shall deliver with a shout. You know, no, you don't hear me. Because see, I said, uh, it's somebody in here got to get desperate because we ain't desperate enough. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. We come to church to feel good, but we ain't desperate. But when you look at yourself real good, and you tired of what you see, and you tired of hiding in the choir. Don't y'all look at me like that, because some of y'all is hiding. You know I ain't scared. I pull you out. I tell you hide. You hide. You hide. When you look at yourself and say, that, oh God, I know I'm here, but I need you to wash me. I know I'm here, but I need you to purge me. I'm tired of just going to church, but I need another hotel. I need you to do something on the inside that I never had before. Listen, let me tell you something. I had my first experience with God when the power of God got on me, and I could not control myself. My mother and them had to pick me up, and it wasn't no many long late years ago they had to pick me up and carry me out of church put me in the car I was still under the power I was under the power so I stopped begging my mother I said mama please please pray it off me please pray and I couldn't stop speaking I had never felt God like that in my life and that's what helped me to know that I had man's anointing you don't hear me my favorite preacher lay hands on me and I feel something but I had never been really touched by the raw power of God I'm not hearing nobody say nothing in here. All the way in the balcony, I'm talking about. See, see, every time we try to give you God, we got to give it to you mixed with something. And, and we got to dilute it. Well, you don't want to hurt the people. And where, well, you don't want to offend the people. When you was out there sleeping with anybody, not wearing no condom, you wasn't scared. When you was out there smoking crack, didn't know what you were smoking, you wasn't scared. When you would fornicate on Saturday night and come in here and dance on Sunday, you wasn't scared, but I'm not going back up now because God said it's time to call you to authority. It's time for you to make up in your mind. I don't want God diluted. I want a real experience with the Father. I want to have it. I want to have it for myself. I want to have it. And just let me just let me say this. Let me just say this right quick. See, we don't, we, we don't understand the, 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 the whole the, 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 the whole the whole flow. The whole flow of it because because see see the man of God stands in the house of God he stands proxy as God when he opens up his mouth and says something it should be as God has said it you don't hear what I'm saying did somebody hear what I'm saying 
See, we stuck in so much tradition. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's what the Lord told me. He said, you're stuck in so much tradition. And I would get up in the prayer, and we would sing this song in the prayer. And so every Tuesday, I sang this song. And the Holy Ghost said to me a couple Tuesdays, I don't want to hear that. And so we sang the song, and then after prayer, he said, sing it again. And then the next Tuesday, he said, sing it again. I said, well, God, the people are going to get tired. He said, that's your problem. You're trying to create a program for the people, and you ain't following my spirit. He said, because you don't understand that I'm the one that's running this. I'm the one that's got to be in control of it. You don't hear what I'm saying. See, this pulpit area, there's supposed to be a power that come down from this pulpit. But do you know why the power come down from the pulpit? Can I help you explain that? The power don't come down from God on the pulpit. The power comes from the worshipers that's in back of the pulpit. The power come from the choir ushering in the presence of God. You can't usher men with sin in your life. You can't, uh, and I told him when I said, you can't usher men with sin in your life. You can't usher him in half stepping. And the reason why this man cannot go to his next level because you don't have the power to take it. And I hear God saying that needs to be another seat. That needs to be another revelation. Some of y'all need to make a decision as to whether or not God really called you to usher the body of Christ into his presence because this ain't entertainment. This is a breakthrough. You're responsible for how the service go. If the spirit of the Lord don't come in, it's your fault. If the anointing don't have a passageway, it's your fault. You don't hear what I'm saying. You got to be man enough and woman enough to come to church on Sunday and say, I'm not clean. Brother director, I'm sitting down today. Sister director, I can't leave that song up because I've seen and the glory of God is not on my life because God said after this week, you're going to be responsible and the judgment of God is going to be upon your life because God is calling you to meet authority. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. Revival can't come. Revival can't come to everything in here that's a preacher. Everything in here that's a church mother. Everything in here that's an evangelist. He said, I know I give you power. That means the same authority. You don't hear me tell you. Everything in here that's walking under the mantle of preacher. Oh no, not looking like him. Not wearing suits like Bishop Long. Not going to the same tailor, wearing the same gaiters. You don't hear what I'm saying? We don't care what you got on. We want some power. We want some anointing. We want to see you go after God. We want to see you loosen up your Versace tie and cry out to God. You don't hear what I'm saying because you know what? It's us up here that teach you how to die. You don't hear what I'm saying. It's time for the power of God to flow all over this place. He's only one man and I hear God. You don't hear what I'm saying. You don't hear what I'm saying. God let your people hear you tonight. Every leader, every musician. You don't hear me. You got to make a decision. It's time to make which way am I going? Am I going to play for the world? Am I going to jam? Am I going to play for God? Am I a psalmist or am I a jazz player? Is this just a gig for me? Am I hollering or do I play? with my spirit is the anointing in my life do I want to see God move because you can't go out on Saturday and touch the world for a paycheck and come back in here thinking you're gonna rush us into God because we can hear your jazz we can hear your blues we can hear Mary J Blige in your keys we can hear Snoop Dogg you don't hear what I'm saying and God is saying it's time to make a difference between clean and unclean holy and unholy God, everything. God, I'll say everything you tell me to say. God, I'll do everything you told me to do. I'll do everything. I'll do everything you tell me. Father, I'll do everything. See, this, that's, that's when you know the spirit of pride. That's when you know the spirit of pride. He's jumped on us. Because brother, lately I've been running to the altar. Lately the people have been saying they're going to probably just bind him again. I've been running to that altar. God, don't let me. You kill everything in me that's not like you. You dig it out and I mean dig it out now. After I preach to others, I myself don't want to be a castaway. So you know what, there's some Tuesdays that got to come and wipe my nose. There's some Tuesdays that got to get the slob from off my chin. There's some Tuesdays that got to leave me there and cover me up. You don't hear what I'm saying? Because I don't care anymore. The reason why I was able to stand on that platform at Bishop Jakes is because I met authority. I met the real God. I met the real, the God that ain't playing. You don't hear what I'm saying? Some of us just know the God of our pastors. And so they have a little bit more patience. But I met the God that ain't playing with us. I met the God 
God who is in the end time. I met the God, but we are in the last and the evil days. I met the God just in case you think 911 is over. God revealed to me in prayer that there's another disaster coming that's going to make 911 look like they prayed with us. You don't get what I'm saying. It's time for the real church to get on their face and pray. You ain't got time for no mess. You ain't got time for no junk. And if you are preaching, you ought to be the first one in prayer. If you're in the bank list, where is the intercessors? Where is the intercessory prayer team? We don't need you on the front row looking cute with a badge because you can hold a front row seat. Do you have any power? Can you cast the devil out? Well, get out the front row. We need the anointing. Nobody playing church. Nobody please. Look out here. Look out over this audience. And as far as your eyes can see, on television, look further than that. We got a church that's hungry. You hear me? Not for. Well, don't turn your Bibles to. And we're going to give you. No. Lord, have your way. God, if you find anything in me that shouldn't be, take it out. Cleanse me because I want to be safe. I want to be, I want to be whole. All over this building, I can see it. And, and, and in about two minutes, something is getting ready to break. Now watch him, he's... Something is getting ready to break in this building forever. No, 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 this ain't going to be no revival to, 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 you know, we had a powerful week. Uh -uh. Something is going to transform in the atmosphere forever. God, I just need, all I need is a few people that want it. All, 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 all I need is a few people that want new birth. No, 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 you, you, you go to church here. You know, but are you in the spirit of the anointed of why God called it? Do you think, do you think, do you think God just built this building for nothing? Do you think that he just built this big edifice for nothing? Do you think that he built it like this and filled it for nothing? Do you think he did that and then called it new birth? No, no, no. Come out of the membership and get in the spirit of what God is trying to pronounce. You don't get what I'm saying. Get into the anointing of what God is trying to put out. And all over this building, if you're here tonight, God didn't listen. A flyer didn't get you here. Television didn't get you here. The announcement on the radio did not draw you. You're in this building because the almighty God is calling you to authority. The almighty God is speaking down in your spirit. He's saying, I'm giving you a chance. I'm giving you a chance. Don't let it be set too late. Don't let it be set. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all. Wait, 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 wait. See, we don't hear that. We don't hear that. We don't cook, cause, cause, cause see the devil done told you you got time. You got time. You got time. Just a, that's all right. You got time. You got time. That's all right. You got time. You got time. You got time. I'm here to tell you that there was a power that is getting ready to hit this building, and you ain't gonna never come back to it. You don't hear me? That's a, that's a power that's getting ready to hit this building in about two minutes. And if you're willing to give it up, if you're willing to cry out to God, I'm telling you, you ain't going back to it. I got two sisters. One was on crack for 20 years, went through rehab four times. One was on crack for 15 years, went through rehab six times. Every time she went to rehab and came back. But when me and my mother and them got on my face before God and turned our plates down, and I began to purify, they both came off crack, was delivered in an instant, ain't never been back. Building houses from the ground, ain't never had no withdrawals and nothing else did not go through a step one step two program you know why because when you get enough purification in your life the anointing will step upon you and you will cast the devil out of your mama you will cast it out of your brother and your sister you will cast that demon out of your children you will cast that demon out of your church let me just close. No, 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 no. You in your bench. And then you standing next to somebody that's real important. Then you need to move. See, see, you, you, you no, know, look around you, because I ain't scared tonight. You, 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 you stand next to one of them people that.
looking like um This is power. You move. Cause you standing next to a religious demon that's trying to hide the fact that they need a drink from God. If you in this building and you know it's been a long time since you had a gully washing, that's what the old saints used to call a gully washing. When that thing hits your belly, and it takes you over to the point that you praising God from another ram. You, your voice don't even sound like your voice anymore. Now, 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 now see, if you, if you standing next to one of them people that act like they don't need it, then you get away from them. But if you want it, honey, take off your earrings. Whatever's in your way, take your shoes off. Go and take your shoes off. Take your glasses off. Put your glasses somewhere where you can't crush them. And tell your neighbor, give me some room. Because I've been waiting on God for a long time. I've been waiting on God to call my name. I've been waiting on this. Give me some space, cause I, I gotta have room to die. I gotta have room to crucify the flesh. I gotta have room for God to deliver me. I gotta have room for my breakthrough. I'm tired of being stuck. I'm tired of being where I am. I want a breakthrough. Hold on. Hold up at this building. Baby, you need that. Take your glasses off and that green, that green t-shirt. With your hand up, take your glasses off, baby. You need to come out that bench because God gonna do something for you tonight. Hold a double cool shot. Hold a double cool shot. God gonna hit that balcony tonight. Lady right there in that black with that curly hair, it's your turn. God gonna deliver you. He gonna break a habit out of your spirit tonight. Oh, you don't hear me. Lady right there, he taking you to another level in your prayer life. You've been called to be an intercessor, a mighty woman of God. The devil been having you trapped with issues and circumstances. He gonna cause you to forgive. He gonna cause that offense to come out of your spirit. Oh, come on somebody, come on somebody. Oh, come on somebody. See, understand something. Let me help you with something right quick. When God, uh, can I just make an announcement to this choir? There is enough room on this pulpit for some of y'all. You need to make this your altar. When the power of God get ready to hit this place, I don't want you to think we get ready to praise God and uh, then, uh, you know, you're going to praise him for a few minutes and uh, they'll just throw your Bible and stuff right over that leaves right there and put that pen down. Okay. And we're going to praise him for a little bit. And then... Um, then, uh, you know, we're going to stop. No, 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 no. See, this is new birth. This is new birth. Ain't no baby coming to the, through the birth canal till the water break. You're going to praise them till your water break. Men and women. You ain't macho when you don't praise God. You a fool when you don't praise God. Because God want to do something in your marriage. He want to do something in your house. He want to do something in your spirit. You don't hear what I'm saying. You need to loosen up your tie, take it off. We ain't dressed up no more. We don't care about your suit. Come on, every man in here, loosen up your tie. Since you didn't get a clue, let me tell you. Take it off. Open up your shirt. This is revival. This ain't a conference. It's a breakthrough. Come on, we going back to church. Take it off. Take every usher. I don't care if you're a security guard. We're going back to old time revival. I don't know about y'all, but I got saved calling on Jesus. You don't hear what I'm saying. I got saved crying out to God till I felt him in my belly. Come on here, somebody. Now, in says, you just, hey, let me help y'all with something. Let me help you with something. You can't help nobody. Turn around and tell your neighbor, I'm not helping you. Tell them, hey, however you fall and where you fall. You, you, if, 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 if you feel yourself falling, you better just get on your knees because I ain't helping you. Tell your neighbor, I can't help you because I need help myself. I'm not holding you. I'm not pulling down your dress. I'm not fixing your blouse because God needs to do something in my spirit and I ain't got time to babysit you. I need it for myself. I feel the whirlwind in here. I feel the whirlwind even in the balcony. I feel something in here. 
Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you how you're going to do this. We ain't, we ain't hallelujah. We ain't glory to God. We ain't Lord, I thank you, because we ain't got there yet. We ain't hallelujah because we ain't got nothing to praise him for yet. We are yes, Lord. We are yes, Lord, and with our mouth until yes, Lord, hit our belly. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Because you won't know when it hits your belly. Because the baptism of the Holy Ghost is going to fall in this place afresh. Some of y'all, it's been a long time since you spoke in tongues. It's been a long time since you spoke with a refreshing. But God said, not only am I going to take you to another level. Do anybody believe this prophecy? I'm going to rebaptize you in the Holy Ghost. You don't hear what I'm saying. Now, for the next few minutes, we ain't using no music. Because you ain't got no organ at home. You ain't got no piano in your kitchen. Ain't no drums in your basement. You ain't got no band in your car. You ain't got no orchestra on your job. Come on here, somebody. Now God said, open up your mouth. And as loud as you can, close your eyes. Don't look at me, because I'm not the Holy Ghost. And begin to tell him yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes. My soul say yes. Come on, young man, that's it. My spirit say yes. I've been running a long time. I've been doing it my way. But tonight, God, my soul say yes. Birth it in me, God. Birth a yes in my spirit. Birth a yes in my mind. Birth it way down in me. I want to do your will. I 